Elementary D. Today is Tuesday, April 28th, 2020. And for today's assignment, you saw that I have a few questions about the pages that I'm going to read, okay? Um, and to help you, I am going to be reading while you read your book, okay? So make sure you have your super fudge book and we're on chapter 11, Catastrophes, which was one of our vocabulary words. All right, I'm on page 148. Dad stopped talking about his book. I had the feeling it wasn't going very well. Instead, he talked about growing vegetables and how to cook them Chinese style or about the Princeton University hockey team. He took me to all their home games. When Jimmy Fargo came to visit us, he joined us. I'm really into violence, Jimmy said. I think hockey's a great game. It's a lot bloodier than football and there are more fights. That's not what hockey's all about, Dad argued. It's a game of skill, of timing, of precision. Yeah, sure, Jimmy said. I know all of that, but it's still great to see the blood bounce on the ice. Okay, so Jimmy's a little aggressive. Um, and Dad is saying, no, hockey, which we know what hockey is. Hockey is a game. We have a puck and a stick, and we um, shoot it into the goal. I, I don't play hockey, but... <laughs> um, so hockey, and we play it on ice. Okay, I'm on page 149. Blood bounces on ice? Yeah, Jimmy said, and so does vomit. See, it has to do with the temperature of the ice versus the temperature of the body, and Jimmy, please, Dad said, turning green. It's true, Mr. Hatcher, they both bounce on ice. So here Jimmy's talking about how blood, we know that blood's inside of our body, and vomit can bounce on the ice, okay? And that is, he does. He likes hockey because he likes the game, okay? Maybe so, Dad said, but that's not the reason we go to the games. I know, Jimmy said, but it's a nice side event. Dad shook his head and began to check off player's name on the list inside of the program. Jimmy leaned across me and tapped Dad's arm. I'm not a violent person, Mr. Hatcher. Don't get the wrong idea. It's just that it's healthy. It's a healthy way to use up some of my aggressive energy. Hey, Jimmy, I said. Yeah? Shut up. Okay, sure, Jimmy said. And he was quiet until nearly the end of the third period when four of the players got into a fight. Then he stood up and yelled, kill, kill. I tugged at his sweater until he sat down again. Later, when I was in bed and Jimmy was in his sleeping bag, he said, I've been seeing the school psychologist twice a week. She says I have a lot of anger. I'm on page 150. I have a lot of anger because my parents split up. They separated. Take my word for it, Peter. Divorce is a catastrophe. You should watch your parents all the time and listen to every word they say so they can't ever take you by surprise. Okay, so Jimmy, um, he's a good friend to Peter, but maybe he doesn't give the best advice, okay? For the next couple of weeks, I paid close attention to my parents, looking for possible signs of divorce. But I didn't see or hear anything unusual, and soon I got tired of watching and listening. Besides, whenever my parents fight, they just wind up laughing. In February, we celebrated Tootsie's first birthday. She carried on a family tradition of smashing her fist into the birthday cake. Grandma, who believes in giving out gifts for everyone, not just the birthday person, bought me a four-color ballpoint pen and fudge a new Brian Tumpkin book. Okay, so I don't know if you have people in your family that they give presents to everybody, not just the birthday person. So that's how Grandma is, okay? She gave a present to Tootsie, because it's her birthday, uh, Peter, and Fudge. Read, Fudge told Grandma. She took him on her lap and read him the latest story about Yura, one of Brian Tumpkin's characters. I used to really like his books when I was a little kid, I said. I'm not a little kid, Fudge reminded me. Next year, I'll be in first grade. Okay, that's like elementary A. <laughs> you want to see a little kid? Look at that birthday girl. Okay, so he's pointing at Tootsie. The birthday girl was sitting in her high chair making a mess. Grandma had brought her a new baby proof cup, 
one that refused to turn over no matter how hard Tootsie tried. So it's one of those cups that you turn it like this and nothing will fall out. So it's really good for babies. Finally, Tootsie screeched, ah! picked up the cup and dumped her milk all over her head. Tootsie's first birthday would go down as a real catastrophe. I said, what's a cata catastrophe, Fajas? It's when something goes wrong. Oh, so now we know what that word means, when something goes wrong, I said. Or when everything goes wrong, Mom added. Talk about catastrophes. Six weeks later, Tootsie learned to walk. Okay, now she's walking. At first, it was just a few feet at a time, from mom to dad, or from me to fudge. But pretty soon, she was toddling all over the place. Sometimes she'd crash land, we know what that word means. Um, and if no one was watching, she'd laugh and start all over again. But if she caught one of us looking at her, she'd start bawling, <laughs> crying, and wouldn't stop until she got an arrowroot cookie, okay? So, I don't know if you guys have noticed that with babies, Sometimes, if they fall, nobody looks, and they get up. But if everyone looks, and they start crying, okay? So that's Tootsie. And Tootsie wasn't the only one crash landing. Fudge was learning to ride his bicycle. One of his major problems was stopping. Instead of using his brakes, okay, well, that's to stop, he kept trying to jump off while his bike was still going. So he's riding his bike, He's riding his bike and he just jumps out of the bike when he wants to stop. <laughs> um, I was wrong when I told him he might get a couple of scraped knees, elbows, knees, and head more like it. He's gonna hurt every part of his body constantly, but he refused to give up. He was really determined to get to ride to school. I really like that, Fudge wants to, to do this. Finally, Toward the end of April, mom and dad decided that Fudge had mastered the art of bike riding well enough to ride to school with Daniel, so now he can do it, who had learned, who had learned on his front lawn just the way he had said he would, without a bruise or a scrape anywhere. So Daniel was very good. And it would have been, turned out okay if only Fudge had remembered to use his brakes to stop when he got to bike rack at school, but he didn't. So he crashed into the rack. The rack is where you have all the bicycles. Knocking down a pile of bikes, poof. And he wound up with his scraped elbows, scraped knees, and torn jeans. Don't tell mommy, Fudge said, or she will never let me ride to school again. I think mom's gonna notice. Anyway, I said, you're a mess. I carried him into the nurse's room. Miss Elliot washed off his cuts and bruises with peroxide. And when she said, and what, when she did, Fudge let out a howl. Imagine if they put alcohol, ah, it hurts a lot. Not that I blamed him, I could practically feel the sting myself. But Fudge didn't stop with one howl. He kept up making such a racket, he's making so much noise, ah, that Mr. Green, the principal, heard him and came running down the hall. What's going on here? Mr. Green said. Scrape knees and elbows, Miss Elliot said. Scrape knees and elbows, Mr. Green repeated. When I was a boy, I had scraped knees and elbows all the time. Used to roller skate and fall down week after week, Fudge sniffled and said. Too bad you weren't any good at it. Who says I wasn't any good at it? Mr. Green, the principal, asked. You just said you were always falling down, Fudge said. That's because I took a lot of chances, Mr. Green said. Now I want you to hurry back to your classroom because we're having a surprise visitor in a little while. Who is it? Fudge asked. It's a very famous man. Someone who writes and illustrates children's books. His name is Brian Tumpkin. Imagine if we had Judy Bloom, the, the, the person who writes this book, the person who wrote Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing and Freckle Juice, um, if she came, that's very important. Brian Tumpkin is alive? Fudge asked. Alive and well, on his way to our school, said the principal. Brian Tumpkin is alive! Fudge said again, 
I never knew that. Did you know that, Peta? I never thought about it, <laughs> I said. Mr. Green faced Miss Elliot and said, lucky break for all of us. He agreed to do a program for our boys and girls. I'm afraid I don't know who he is, Miss Elliot said. Okay, so Miss Elliot, the nurse, she doesn't know who the author is, um, but Fudge does. All right, so that is the end of our chapter. Um, and we're going to answer a few questions. I put it in Class Dojo, and I can't wait to see your answers. Bye, Elementary D.